Hey YouTube, this is Tech Savvy Solution here, and I'm here with my video review on the unlocked Sony Xperia Play. Not the one for Verizon, but the one that the UK users and like Canadian people use. Anyways, doesn't really make a difference, so let's get on with the review. So this is going to be kind of lengthy, so you want to check out the video description below so you can skip two different sections of the review. Let's say you want to see like the camera or you want to get right to the game demos, then the video description will have links to each different part of the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our general specs out of the way. So as I mentioned before, this is the unlocked version, so it runs on all GSM bands, it's quad band. And the size of this, if we go ahead and take a look this way or the dimension going this way lengthwise is 119 millimeters going this way is 62 millimeters and then the thickness of this is 16 millimeters and it's pretty chunky for a smartphone but in my experience I didn't really notice that it was this big um, that's mostly due to the teardrop shape and contour of the Xperia Play fits nicely in the hand, like seriously, it fits quite nicely. And I feel like, like more like I'm carrying a very slim PSP Go. And if you think of it that way, it's like, wow, this is like a really nice gaming system. And it's pretty small for one, and it's also a phone. So what can get better than this? So again, with the dimensions, it's not that bad. It does weigh in at 175 grams though, so you will kind of feel it in your pocket. But I mean like, being a girl, it's not, like, even even though I'm a girl, like, it doesn't feel like something heavy or something bulging out of my skinny jeans pocket. It's, like, it's, like, pretty manageable. So, for all you guys out there, it really won't make that much of a difference. So, I'm going to go ahead with my infamous, infamous size comparison. So, the first thing we're going to compare it to is a pack of gum, some everyday objects. In terms of length... It's definitely taller than a pack of gum. In terms of width, it's a bit closer in terms of the width of the phone compared to the pack of gum. In terms of thickness, it's a bit thicker than the pack of gum. Although on its very um, at its very thinnest dimensions at the ends, it does come close to being as thick of a pack of gum. So again, not as bad as you guys might think, and because I have small hands, it makes the phone look gigantic, but in reality, it really isn't. Okay, on to a dollar bill. We're gonna go ahead and look at the length. Obviously, not nearly as long as a dollar bill, but almost as thick. Almost as thick. Or wide, I mean. <laughs> if it was as thick of a, as a dollar bill, I would be quite surprised. But yeah. You know what I mean. In terms of a popsicle stick, you may wonder why I'm using this, but I'm using this because it's like exactly as tall as a popsicle stick. So yeah, not too big. In terms of the display, it is an LED backlit LCD display, capacitive touchscreen, and it has 16 million colors. In terms of the viewing angles, I didn't find them to be too spectacular. There is a lot of glare, and in direct sunlight, it's not very legible, or it's not um, very good for viewing. Especially if you're outside and you're taking photos, you want to go see what you're taking photos of. Not too great. And um, oops. if you go to our settings, we want to go to display. You look at the brightness. I have it not. I have it set not all the way up yet, but this is the brightness at full brightness. It's not very bright. It's actually um, this brightness is the brightness compared to like the brightness of the LG like G2X at this level. So it's a pretty dim screen, but I had no problems whatsoever like when viewing indoors. It was like a normal screen. And actually, like I found it to be pretty pleasant, especially when gaming, because like when you game when you're looking at a screen for a long time, you don't want it to be too bright, otherwise it'll hurt your eyes. So if you're using it indoors, like it's pretty good screen, but outdoors, not quite the same story. So yeah, um, in terms of the resolution of the screen, it's 480 by 854 pixels, so it's a pretty good screen density. It's not retina display, so you won't be looking at in each individual pixel and saying, oh, it's like perfect, and like, 
my eyes can't tell the difference from pixel to pixel. You still can, but everyday use really you're not going to notice that much of a difference. In terms of the screen size, it is a 4.0 inch display, so you get a pretty good display for gaming. And speaking of gaming, here is where the goods are at. We have, instead of what you might expect to be a QWERTY keyboard underneath this thing, you have full PSP gaming controls minus two extra, um, the two extra shoulder buttons. You do get the L and R, but not the L, R, L2, R2, but whatever. Like, the casual gamer won't know the difference. It's good stuff. So what I found with these controls is that they're really responsive. I'll have a game demo towards the end of this review. But yeah, like I had no problems whatsoever gaming and it was overall a very good experience. The buttons are very responsive. I found the optical trackpads to be a bit sensitive, but you can always adjust the sensitivity of these things in the game itself. So it wasn't much of a problem either. Um, you have a menu button right here. So it just pops up the menu as if you're going to press the menu button on the side. You have start and select buttons over here. Pretty convenient. And then you also have this logo that says Xperia Play is um, the PlayStation certified console. Um, if you haven't heard before, PlayStation announced that it'll launch its PlayStation network. And that's basically saying that like it'll provide PlayStation quality games to all different platforms besides just dedicated PSP consoles, like dedicated to gaming consoles, you'll have phones running PlayStation games. And this is the first phone to be able to do so. The NGP is also the next device to be certified. I think it already is, but hasn't been released yet. So yeah. Okay, so in terms of the UI of this phone, you might have noticed that it is quite um, is quite the same. Um, I don't know how else to put it as like what you might see out of the box, but you might have noticed one slight difference. Is that once I put it into landscape mode and go to home, on the normal UI you wouldn't be able to have landscape mode. But Sony Ericsson had a leaked UI that allows it to be viewed in landscape mode. Also, if you want to do the whole pinch thing and you get to see your widgets instead of being stationary they now float around unfortunately you can't like drag the widgets or anything they just kind of float there and then if you tap on one it'll automatically go to the screen that the widget is on which is pretty cool I think it's more for show than for usability but it's, I think it's still quite useful nonetheless in terms of the sound we have um pretty good speakers. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there, but let me do a sound demo for you so you get the idea of what it sounds like. So I have Mozart. Um, yeah, they're for like college editions. So here's Mozart playing, concerto in G, second movement. Or how about let's do the first movement? All right. So at max volume, sounds like this. And if we want to go to some like pop music, because you guys don't want to listen to Mozart all day. Alright, let's do some Panic at the Disco. So this is the speaker at full volume. And it can go to as low of a volume as this. Alright. So speaking of the music and sound and such like that, you'll check out the Sony Ericsson's media player skin and it looks pretty nice I mean it's very simplistic as with all the Sony Ericsson UI on this phone but I really like it I don't know maybe it's because I like the color scheme that of the I, maybe I like the blue color scheme because blue is like my favorite color but yeah like even if you notice um, on like let's see like the settings for example it's all in this nice blue background And then, let's say for like the volume, the sliders are blue, I like that. But this is just like a like a quick preview of the UI of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. And it's also true for the Xperia Arc, Neo, etc. In terms of the storage, this thing has 400 megabytes of internal storage and 512 megabytes of RAM. Keep in mind, RAM is used to run applications and ROM is actually used to store the applications. So the more ROM you have, the more 
you are able to store like music or apps, videos, etc. But the more RAM you have, the more you're able to multitask and not slow your phone down and not have your phone slow down or run out of memory, such like that. This does have a GPS, Bluetooth, um, and it uses a micro USB port right here. And while we're taking a tour of the phone, let's look at the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack over here. And then the other side, all we have are our two shoulder buttons from the gamepad and our volume buttons. One thing to note about the volume buttons is that they're um, aligned so that they go from like this button is up and this button is down. However, when you're gonna go, oops, when you're gonna go game, you can also adjust the volume like this. However, you might think that right is to go louder and left is to go softer. That's not the case because they've been programmed or like aligned so that, or whatever, programmed so that um, this is up and this is down. So like when you're pressing it like this, this is you're actually going softer, not louder, and louder, not softer. So just keep that in mind. So on the front, we have buttons for the back home, menu, and search. So as you can see, they're not backlit, even in, dark, in the dark they aren't. So just, I don't know, memorize the number, the order of the buttons. Bet you guys, like all you gamers out there, already memorize like button combinations for games, so this shouldn't be too hard for you guys to memorize. This is back home, menu, search. Like, I think, I really think Android should like come up with like a unified system for the ordering of these buttons because I get mixed up from phone to phone to phone. They're always different. Like how many different combinations of buttons? Like I've never had one that was exactly the same as the other. It was like, I don't know. I don't know, that's just a personal gripe, but it's not bad by any means. Alright, so in terms of the camera, if you flip over to the back of this phone, we have a 5 megapixel snapper right there with a flash. And then, of course, we have this, like, Sony, Xperia, Sony Ericsson logo and an Xperia logo over here. And I have to say, like, the back battery door cover is, like, it's really nice. I love the design. However, it's, like, plastic. Same with these, like, chrome accents. They're plastic. So they get scratched pretty easily. Just as a warning. And they also track a lot of fingerprints. Same goes for the screen. And while we're in the front, I also want to mention that we have a front-facing camera over here as well. So taking us to the camera interface, we have the basic Android options, like here are the settings for auto, infinity, macro, for the exposure, scene modes, um, also the picture size, quality, color effect, and then we also have location settings. So if you snap a photo and you want to know that you were in like Italy when you did it, um, then you could tag that. We also have white balance, flash, and then the back or front camera. So that's pretty cool. Let me take a sample shot. So we have our bobblehead and my moose. Isn't that cute? So we can take a photo and you'll notice that it zoomed into focus and took the shot. I want to note that there's no touch focus though so that's kind of a bummer. If you want touch focus you might as well download a third party app from the market. Not too big of a deal to do but if you want that then that's what you have to do. Also notice if you slide this up then you can also press X Right, you can press X to take the picture. It's quite nice, like, if you're trying to do one-handed pictures instead of trying to hold your phone and balance and juggle and all that jazz, you can just slide it up and press X. So, like, I took this camera on my trip to California, and I was just walking around and taking photos, and I just want to note that the stability of the, like, the stability of the shots in terms of if you're moving around the camera and you want to take a still photo, it works pretty well. Like, it doesn't have much of, like, a jerk or a blur. It's only if you put it in, like, night mode that, like, if you move it, the, sh the photo gets blurred a lot. But, like, I was, like, 
I was like, the car was like moving and I was taking photos and they weren't getting blurry, which was like surprising. I had it on auto mode too. So I just wanted to note that. It was pretty cool for the camera. Not all cameras have that kind of feature. Good um, stabilization of the images. So the OS of this, if we look at the settings about phone, we have Android version 2.3.2. It's always upgradable to 2.3.3 so yeah I just chose to keep on 2.3.2 so I can get it rooted but you can also root it on 2.3.3 as well alright so if we look at the screen I know I told you about like the screen size and the resolution but let's look at the viewing angles oh we already looked at the viewing angles that's right Okay, skip that. Okay, so if we want to go ahead and preview some of the typing or some of the keyboard features of this phone, let's go ahead and how about let's go to the messaging app. Alright, so we have, right now I have the Go keyboard installed. Just because I didn't, I wasn't too crazy about the stock keyboard. But we have default input and a Chinese keyboard, which is kind of like, why do I have a Chinese keyboard? Why don't I have a Korean or Japanese or I don't know Spanish keyboard? But whatever. Um, so this is their stock keyboard. It's okay. I mean, the I feel like the space, the keys are a bit narrow. So like, if I'm saying, hello, I am typing on the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. Maybe I just suck at typing, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of the keyboard. So go ahead and download a third-party keyboard from the Android market. It's free, so why not? Okay. So, now we are on to probably the video, the part of the video review that you're all looking forward to and that is the games demo. I downloaded quite a bit of the games that are available for the Xperia Play so we can access those games either by scrolling to the Xperia Play app which should be, oops, right here uh, okay, hold on. These are the games you can download not exactly the ones that I have installed right now. Oh, play now. There we go. Or not. <laughs> that is very weird. But anyways, if we explore the Xperia Play app, um, we can scroll through a list of games that are Xperia Play optimized. And then also if you want to go for more games, these are the games that you're looking at right now. And here are the Xperia Play games. I was right the first time. So these games are the ones that are currently installed on your device. You can also access it by sliding up. I've been so used to doing this I like forgot where the actual app was and how to get to them. But yeah, so here's where you at where you are at with these games. I'm just gonna do a quick preview of each one. I can turn on the loudspeaker, media volume, and let's go ahead and try Asphalt 6 first. I can get these two out of the way. Alright. Skip this. You can also get a good look at the loading times for each of the games. All right, so here's Asphalt 6. So I'm gonna do like a free race. So you can look at the cool UI, it's quite good graphics. And we can race. Yeah, it's the Bahamas, but this ain't vacation. You'll have a boatload of 
straightaways and shortcuts to get ahead. Oh, okay. Alright, alright. So, let's get on with the game. So, I'm using the X to accelerate, and then you can use the shoulder button to do the nitro boost. You can steer with the D pad, but you can also steer with the optical trackpad. Alright. I found the trackpad to be pretty sensitive, but again, you can adjust these settings in the game menu. Overall, I think it works pretty well, but you can go either way, which is nice. I mean, if you only had on-screen controls, then you wouldn't have this type of versatility. And if you don't like these like physical cord or physical controls, you can always switch to on-screen. And I'm gonna crash right now. Okay. Anyway, so that's a preview of Asphalt. Let's go ahead and exit to the home. So the next game that we're gonna go preview is Bruce Lee. And you also have the option to enable sound. I'm gonna say yes. So we have things like just play, player profile, settings, credits, etc. So I'm going to play. There are a lot of different modes like story, arcade, time attack versus survival training ground. So I'm just going to do arcade just because I want to do like a quick preview of how it's like to fight. You have a choice when you first start off of Bruce Lee or Shenlong. But as you progress through the game, probably through the story mode, you'll be able to unlock new characters. So how about let's do the drunk guy? Because he's pretty funny. Alright. So let's fight. And like, if you don't, I mean, um, what I wanted to say was like, if you were to try to play this game on a touchscreen only phone without these controls, I think I'd be like sucking a lot more than I am right now. And I'm sucking pretty badly right now, like I'm gonna lose. Yeah, I lost. But anyways, like you're probably better than I am, whoever's watching, but... Again, if you were to try this on a touchscreen control or touchscreen only phone, like there's no way. Like the controls wouldn't be nearly as responsive and it wouldn't even matter if you knew the controls or not, you'd just be losing. Anyways, I'm not gonna embarrass myself even more, so I'm gonna exit this game. So what you wanna do to exit the game is go back to the main menu and then exit from there. If you just press home, then It'll continue running in the background, which may be good for some people that want to continue the game later. But um, it'll be it'll have an icon on the top here, and then you'll be able to click on the notification that the game is running and jump straight back to where you started before, which is convenient. But for now, I'm gonna probably clear apps and then run another game. So our third game that we're gonna demo right now. Oops. Okay is Eternal Legacy. It's an RPG game, has pretty good graphics, it's fully 3D, and you'll find out in a minute. So one thing I want to note that when you have these games, when you first download them, like from the market and such, you're gonna have to, first when you open the app after you download it, you're gonna have to download an additional um, chunk of data. It's about anywhere from 50 to about 400 megabytes of data. So just keep that in mind. Because, like, it's convenient because you can't, if you, or you can, but like, if you upload, like, 
400 megabytes of bytes of data onto the Android market as an app and like the average person wants to download the app it's gonna take quite a while whereas if you just download the app directly from the market and then you download the rest of the game on your own time it's a little more convenient so I'm gonna continue where I left off so again really cool graphics futuristic I like and just check out the loading times not too bad. Certainly not worse than like the PSP or the PSP Go. It's kind of cheesy. But, okay, so like Let's just take a look at a fight scene. And here it's like real time gaming, so you have a list of like attacks or commands that you have to issue onto the spar. And like as long as they're not full, you can keep on issuing attacks. And like if you like wait, then you're looking at the spar over here and like the game is still going and you're just being slow. So like you have to be on top of your game and like issuing like commands like in real time. And then if you try and issue more attacks than what the queue has, then it'll say the queue is full. But as you can see, they're really good graphics, and there's like no lag at all. That was cool. Okay, so I'm going to hit the pause button over here. And then take you to the menu. And you can use the trackpad navigate or you can touch back to menu and use touch screen controls I really like it like I kind of wish the PSP had this kind of like touch screen interface plus um, physical buttons but the Xperia play has it and with a much better resolution too and it's thinner okay so let's get on with the next game that we're gonna review or that we're gonna look at Again, go to Xperia Play Games. Let's look at FIFA 10. Oh. Wonder why that's the case. Alright. Just a little bug. Alright, so here are your options for FIFA 10. You have a kickoff. I don't know how to play this, but... <laughs> hey, check out the tick. Alright, and then you have some controls. We don't have A or B or whatever, but we have X and Y. Some control schemes. Check out the graphics for this. It's quite nice. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh no. Ah, uh, here are A and B on the touch screen. But you can use these controls as well. I don't know how to play games on this. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, I suck. 
All right, all right. So we're gonna quit the match here. And then let's preview the next game. What we have here. We have Let's Golf 2. And we have Nova, Rainbow Six, Sacred Odyssey, Star Battalion, Sims 3, and Uno. So I'm not sure if I want to go through all 10 of these games. But um, let's just continue with Let's Golf, and I'll probably just do Nova instead of Rainbow 2. And then since we already previewed an RPG, I won't do Sacred Odyssey. And then lastly, we'll do Sims 3. Alright, so let's do Let's Golf 2. Getting pretty long on the review time for this, but... Alright, let's golf too. Okay, let's skip the preview or let's skip the intro. Okay, so here's single player. I'm just gonna do like an instant play for this. Alright, so you notice you can like customize your character and stuff. As of now, there are only two characters unlocked. So like as you progress through the game, I'm guessing you'll be able to unlock all of these other characters. But if you want to customize, you can customize your clothes, hair, golf ball, golf club, which you'll be able to unlock later on in the game. Okay, so let's go do this game. And we have Mexico first up. So if you notice in the bar here, our goal is to aim for like wherever that tab is. That little pin over there. So we want to aim for like about 100%. Okay. And then in here we want to aim for accuracy. Which is in the green. So not too bad. Oh no. A little over. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're just gonna, for closer shots, we wanna aim, we only have one parameter that we've got to aim for. So we're aiming for about 25%. All right. So now we have a birdie, and that means we got minus one on our score, or plus one, minus one, my bad. So if we continue, we'll go through and visit different locations on the golf course, or different locations for golf courses. But since we're just demoing this review, or this game, I won't continue on with this game in the review. So let's get on with the next game. Next game on the list. Is Nova 2. And just keep in mind that all these games are in HD. So they're optimized for the play. With both buttons and the screen quality. Or screen resolution. Check out the intro. Okay. So I'm going to continue. I already started this game. And this game it really relies on either like the precision and the touch screen or the precision on these touch pads over here. Because, like, these are used to aim your gun and stuff. So, <laughs> you want to be really accurate because you have, like, a pin-sized cursor that you have to aim on, like, the head of each, um, of each of your enemies and such. So, like, I'm not sure if you can see the cursor, but it's, like, right here. See? That thing. And you have to be really accurate with it. To shoot, you use, like, the R button. And then to jump, use the X button. That's pretty much all you have to know. 
um, switch weapons, yeah, all that jazz. Alright, so for this game, I'm like on the boss level. Okay, so, um, oh. Oh. Okay. Anyways, like, so I'm supposed to use these mines to, like, blow up the boss. Pretty much. That's why I said I was on the boss level. So here I'm gonna demo, like, shooting, um, some of the generic enemies. Not too powerful, but here they come. So, like, this is what I meant by you have to be really accurate with the touchpad. If I don't want to be accurate, I mean, I can just throw a grenade over there and it'll blow up everyone. And then there we go. That was kind of lame. But anyways, and that is a preview of Nova 2. You know, here's just some of the landscape of it. Really nice graphics. And again, the controls are like, I love it. Because like, I'm not like all the way up here and like blocking the game while I'm trying to control it. So it's quite nice. I'm very satisfied. It's one of my favorite games. Okay. So the next game that we're going to preview. Again, I'm just going to clear the, the RAM every time I do this. But if you notice, we have quite a bit of free memory. 275. It's above average. So the next game that we have here. Oops. Is Sims 3. That is our last game that I'm going to be demoing. Alright, so let me just start the game, and what you can do is create a new game. Like, I would continue, but I want to, like, take you through this. So the first thing you want to do is, like, customize your sim. So you can choose from either boy or girl. I think you can... There we go. Choose boy or girl by tapping on these icons. And then you can, like, oh, go around. And then you can also change, like... The hair, color, clothes, and you can also change the pants. Uh. All right, and then the shoes, but let's just leave it there. We can continue, and then you just like. Select what type of persona you want. So let's say we're a nice girl. Yeah. Okay. And then you can select traits. I'm easily bored. Modest. Friendly. Scroll up here. Um, good sense of humor. And... Uh, I don't know. Conversationalist? And then you just name your sim. Hello. No. Um, let's name it Tech Savvy Solution. Oops. Alright, Tech Savvy Solution, done. And let's name our. Oh, hold on. Yes. Continue. And again, just note the loading times. They're pretty good. So you can just like walk around, um, and when I say walk around, I mean you're navigating through this cursor, and when you press the X button, you're saying, oh, go here. Like, go out your house, or go out of your house. I don't know how that came out. There you go. And yeah, you can like zoom out. 
like pan the area, zoom in, close. And you have some options. And yeah, it's pretty much Sims. So you can see it runs quite fluidly on the Xperia Play. I mean, everything's pretty responsive. There's no lag when I'm scrolling through the screen. And the loudspeaker and the soundtrack sounds pretty great. You can also navigate using touchpads. Although, I mean, if you're going to use the touchpads, you might as well use the touchscreen. It's a lot faster. Or the D-pad, for that matter. But again, I want to emphasize like the control scheme of the Xperia Play, how it's arranged and everything. It's just, it's meant to give you more options to control your gaming. It's not, it's not like a total um, revolution in like gaming and stuff. Like we've had these physical controls for so long. It's just like, whoever's tired of touchscreen controls, say I, and get the Xperia Play, because Xperia Play has so much better physical controls and you don't have to deal with all this touchscreen crap. Yeah. Okay. So that is pretty much a wrap up for the game preview or the game review of this phone. We're hitting about 41 minutes. That's quite the long review, but thanks for sticking with me. If you guys don't want to stick with me, that's totally fine. But I'm going to do one more test, and that is the quadrant standard test. And that is just... Hold on, let me clear out all the apps. Um... So that's just to show you like the in numbers speed of this phone. So like besides subjective opinion, I think it runs pretty smoothly, but let's run the full benchmark and actually get numbers for the speed of this phone. I think it has much to do with how the Sony Ericsson UI isn't like totally chock full of you of like um customizations and um like skins and other like fancy elements and animations. It's quite plain. There are animations and stuff, but it does not bog down the phone at all. Like I really had a good experience in terms of the speed of this phone. So if we look at the frame rate right here, it's not quite the highest. It's quite low actually. Right, but we're getting some good frames per second on this. High 50s. Okay, so let's say okay. So not too shabby. We have 1360 on the benchmark. Certainly not the best. But then again, you have to take in, into consideration that this is a single core um, 1 gigahertz processor. It's not dual core, so you will not have 2000 on your quadrant standard score or like 2500 or anything like that. Um, the advantage of having that is not just that, oh, it's like slower or anything, or the disadvantage is it's slower, but the advantage is, is that it does not consume that much battery life. So you're good. Um, I had no problems whatsoever getting through a full day battery. So you can see here for 40 minutes of doing an in-depth review, we lost like 10%. Like really, it's like 40, what, almost 45 minutes of like constant use. Like when, if you put it on standby time, you won't lose more than 10% an entire day. So really, quite good battery life and that is thanks to not being dual core but single core which consumes less battery and speaking of battery we have a 1500 milliamp battery in the back of this so plenty of juice to keep you going especially with gaming you you're gonna get about three to six hours of gaming on this phone so that pretty much wraps it up if you want to see anything else on this phone just let me know um if i missed anything i know this is a very long review so please, questions, comments, and if you like what you see, please subscribe or rate. That would do it too. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, okay, see you guys next time on the next video review or tutorial. Just want to let you know I'll be selling this thing soon since I'm done reviewing it as I sell all my phones after I'm done reviewing. So check out the eBay auction. I'll have a link in the video description when it's up. 
So yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.